You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. Hello and welcome to the Financial Wake Up Show. Each week, we explore and take a deep dive into awakening the financial abundance we all have inside of us. We educate and create awareness by focusing on fundamental principles of money, talking to business and community leaders about successful habits, while learning from each other how to build, protect, and create legacies. And now, here's your host, Daniel Choi. And good morning. It is a new day, and with each day comes a new beginning and a new chance to do something great, learn something new, and enjoy everything this great life has to offer us. If you have not done so already, go to the iTunes Store, Google Play, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can download all our shows there. We're also on YouTube. Uh, you can find all of it under the Financial Wake Up Show with Daniel Choi. Follow the show, like us, and I promise I will bring you refreshing content every week. Again, this beautiful Saturday morning, I am broadcasting live on KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. I combine integrity with intelligence to wake you up to things you want to be doing financially. Uh, again, check out our website, financialwakeupshow.com. Or visit us on Facebook and Twitter. That's at TFWUS. If you have any doubt, just reach out. And each week we talk about three things. Growing and protecting your wealth is one. Exit planning is number two, which is selling or transferring your business if you're a business owner or retirement if you're an employee. And estate planning, which is creating a legacy while fully enjoying your money while you're alive. And today I'm going to start with a story. I love stories because they're an easy way to explain sometimes this complicated world of money. But uh, back into, in the 1950s through the late 60s, the British car maker Jaguar, uh, many of you have heard of Jaguar, obviously, they became a dominant force in the racing scene across the world. And they established a name on the racing circuit with cars that really pushed the edge of technology back then. So many would ask, what did Jaguar do to their engines to make them win all those racing cups and be successful? And the interesting part of the story is that it wasn't the engine and cranking up the horsepower or the torque in the engine that allowed them to win. It was their breakthroughs in disc brakes that allowed them to make sharper turns, control the vehicle, and beat the competition. So, in fact, other automakers kept focusing on building faster engines and making them more powerful, where Jaguar just made a name through their innovations in their braking systems and ended up winning. So what does the story have to do with money? Well, if saving and investing your money is the engine of your car, the brake system is protecting that money. And not enough people talk about protecting the most valuable asset you have, which is your potential for earning money. Protection is absolutely critical. And if you couldn't tell, I said absolutely very slowly and like bold face because it's just like the brakes on your car. So let's say I tossed you the keys to a Lamborghini or a Porsche, okay? Very, very fast cars, brand new, beautiful. The only catch is there's no brakes. Could you drive that car? Well, you wouldn't be able to enjoy that engine's power and go really fast because without brakes, you can't stop. So even if you went five miles an hour, you would crash the car and vice versa. If you only had a car that had brakes and no engine, you'd end up with a car going nowhere. Your financial situation is the same. You need financial balance between growing your money and protecting it also. So today's Wake Up Now segment is, what is the concept of maximum protection in my financial plan and how do I achieve it? Uh, So if you have any questions about protecting money or or, uh, what I talk about today, email me right now, daniel at financialwakeupshow.com. You can also call the studio, 888-909-1050. We'll take your questions right over the air. Again, if you have any doubt, just reach out. So I'm going to start with the end goal in mind. What do we want to achieve when it comes to protecting your money? Well, the ideal state is to feel bulletproof, really, to any financial catastrophe and still give your time investments to grow properly. So what does this mean? It means that investments, when properly allocated, take time to accumulate. It's when you take too much risk or you're rolling the dice too much with misinformation or no information and you pull the money out early because you need it. And and that's where you cause major, major problems. So for to prevent you from taking money prematurely from your account, you need to make sure you can weather risk that comes from life. I call it life risk. Life risk 
is on top of all the other types of risk you have. So last week on the show, I talked about Microsoft. And uh, if you don't know the story, go back and listen to that episode. But really, the only thing you had to do with Microsoft stock from 1987 to 2000 in those 14 years, the only thing you had to do was hold it. And annually, that was about a 60% rate of return. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you can't just sit on the stock and hold it if you pull the money early because it's not protected. And so to hit the analogy again, Microsoft stock is the engine of your car. But if you don't have any brakes, which is protecting yourself so you don't sell Microsoft early, you don't enjoy the growth in the investment. So the first part of maximum protection is cash reserve, having liquid cash on hand. Why? Because you might have an emergency and you don't want to be liquidating investments. If you have too little of a cash reserve, you have to tap into things like 401k plans, IRAs, retirements. If you need it for a down payment on a home or an emergency or even an opportunity, you see something on sale or a great vacation you want to take and you don't have liquid cash, it's not a deal. For all of those who, uh, of you who are y under the age of 45, I have seen cases where people overfund their long-term retirement plans only to be cash poor right now. That's imbalance right there. It's not ideal. Now, if you have too much in a cash reserve position, you have what's called an idle asset. In other words, you have money that's actually losing money safely to inflation because inflation, again, traditionally about 3 to 4% negative. The bank is paying right now less than 1% interest. So your money is net negative. Your idle asset is losing you money. Now, I've also read where you should have three months cash reserve, six months cash reserve of expenses on hand. I said a few weeks ago, beware of rules of thumb or golden rules. There are no such thing in the world of finance. And so if you follow one of these rules and have only three or six months, beware because the worst thing that could happen is you lose your job or lose your pay. That's probably one of the biggest financial emergencies people run into you have to base your cash reserve on how quickly you can find a job that pays you about the same. So let's look at a nurse. Nurses have very good job security. If they lose their job, they can traditionally find a job in a shorter amount of time. But let's say you're a specialized nuclear engineer and you lose your job because you get laid off. Well, I'm not aware of like all these nuclear engineering firms out there. It could take you longer to find a job that pays you around the same, that won't drive you crazy. So you may want to have one year worth of expenses. So again, cash reserve is the first layer of protection. Make sure you have proper balance. If you have any questions about that, reach out to me. The next thing is health insurance, uh, illnesses, surgery, hospital stays, complications for pregnancy. I mean, you can go name the list on and on and on. These costs can absolutely destroy your finances very quickly if you don't have the proper coverage. My guest today is a specialist experts in this area. I'm going to ask a bunch of questions to him. So we're going to talk about health insurance a ton today. I'm going to go to the next one, uh, which is auto and home insurance. So again, stay tuned for the health insurance, auto and home insurance. These are required by law. So you have them. But the big here is deductible management. What is deductible management? Well, here's the philosophy I try to follow. Ensure what you can afford to lose and uh, excuse me, insure what you cannot afford to lose and self-insure the rest. So what does that mean? Well, things you cannot afford to lose, you should pay a company to insure those things. If you have something you can't afford to lose, then self-insure those, okay? So let's look at car and home deductibles. Deductibles are the biggest factors in the price of your insurances. So the question is, do you have the right amounts? Are you over-insured? Are you under-insured? Uh, what is the deductible management you're using to control whether or not you're saving or, or spending too much money? So I'll give you a quick example. If you have an old 2008 uh, car that's worth, let's say, $8,000, and in your cash reserve, you have $60,000. Well, the interesting thing about that is if you got into a car accident, you could probably pay for five times your vehicle because you have that in a cash reserve. So my question then would be, do you need to pay a low deductible on that? Because you've got almost self-insurance for five times the amount of the vehicle in your cash. There could be a ton of savings there. Okay. Now, related to home and auto is something you don't hear a lot about, but I think is probably the most underrated insurance out there, which is umbrella insurance. 
This makes a huge difference. This is like anti-lock brakes on your car. It protects your home, your investments, your retirement assets from lawsuits and legal, legal costs. I have seen in the last four or five years a huge spike in my clients with regards to lawsuits. It's not just the car accident anymore. Personal injury attorneys are very good at searching public record and determining if they should sue you. So uh, recently I had a client who was driving under the speed limit in a downtown area and hit a person, uh, not their car, but actually someone crossing the street who is three times the legal limit for alcohol. Okay, three times the le they went to alcohol rehab and even when he went to the hospital, he was suffering alcohol withdrawals. That's how much of an alcoholic this person was and they're still suing the driver because the driver has assets that the attorney wants to get to. So please, umbrella insurance, it's usually at a very reasonable cost. Contact your property casualty agent for, for information on that. I think now I'm going to get into the three most critical types of protection I think are out there. The first is what's called disability or income protection. The second is life insurance and the third is long-term care. So let me explain each of these and why I think they're so critical. Disability income protection, what this means is it pays your paycheck when you cannot work. For you business owner listeners out there, it pays your overhead when you cannot work. This way you can still make payments on your mortgage, your rent, you can still continue to save for retirement or college if you're unable to work. So let me define what disability is because I know most people when they hear the word disability, they're thinking of the blue parking lot signs and they're thinking of perhaps being uh, paralyzed or unable to move. Disability, when it comes to income protection insurance, is defined differently. It means you cannot do your job. Your job. That's what it means. It does not mean you are completely paralyzed or mentally disabled because of an accident. It means you can't do your job. So the number one claim for disability income is, believe it or not, back pain. The inability to sit or stand for eight hours during a workday. The second, believe it or not, is stress and anxiety. The third is extended hospital stays due to things like heart issues or cancer or some sort of minor surgeries. Always remember this, folks. Your greatest asset is your ability to earn an income. Without cash flow, there's nothing. And some companies do offer disability income protection. That's fantastic. Oftentimes, though, the best programs I've seen is at 60% of your income, which is then subject to income tax, and some have caps on how much they cover or how long they cover. So what I don't want here is because you have a short-term or even mid-term health concern and you have to sacrifice your home mortgage or your retirement or college funding savings because you're unable to work. Okay, so disability income protection, another layer of protection you want to have. Life insurance, okay, what does life insurance provide? It provides uh, protection against your mortgage or debts, student loans, big, okay, that's a big, big thing you want to cover. Transition time for your family, if something were to happen to you, to give them a few years. If you have young children, this could be a very big thing to keep them in schools. It can provide for a lifestyle to allow you to keep funding retirement even though something happens to you. It can help create a legacy. Now some people say, I want to replace what I would have brought to my family in terms of economic value. That could be another reason to have life insurance. Two more complicated, I mean complex strategies could be to mitigate estate taxes, which we are going to talk about in two weeks, and retirement planning, which I'm going to do an entire show on again in two weeks, so stay tuned for that. But the, 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 the ability to protect against your life is a very critical piece to protection planning. And then long-term care. Long-term care, I did an entire show on this uh, back in episode four. So if you want to go to iTunes or YouTube, go back to episode four. My guest then was a uh, transitioning living consultant and realtor, Pamela Bergman Swartz, who had some fantastic points about what happens as you age and senior care and health care concerns there. So I'm not going to spend too much time. If you want any questions answered on long-term care, please go back to that episode. It was a fantastic one. So as I wrap this segment up, the key is to start early. And here's why. Because you, as you age, the cost to protect yourself go up. And the reason is, as you age, more and more of these life risks become prevalent. If you wait till later, some of these strategies can become unaffordable, problematic, 
you know, it's never too late to get started. I always tell clients, but it's the, you know, the early bird gets the worm. You've heard that before. And another way to look at this is this. Why are auto and home insurances required by law? And how come these other ones aren't? Well, think about it. With all the car accidents going around, if no one had the requirement to have car insurance, think of the hospital bills and the lawsuits that would tie up the court systems. Think of all the upset medical billers who would not get premiums or costs for surgeries paid for. In home insurance, banks would get really upset on mortgages if there's damage to a home through, through a flood or a fire or even the neighborhood values could drop if there's a fire in the neighborhood and you don't have insurance. Why, why is liability and workman's compensation insurance required if you're a business owner? Well, the same thing. The number of lawsuits that would come up in the court systems because of un, um, employees that got hurt on the job would be tremendous. So if the legal system requires these, then think about disability or income protection or life insurance or long-term care or umbrella insurance and why they aren't required. They're not required because they only affect one person. And that's you. You are the most important person. Max protection is critical or else all the hard work you're doing could go away really, really quickly. That's why you see these fundraisers and these GoFundMe campaigns. When we see families go through a tragedy because they're exposed to life risk and I've seen it happen. And I want you to plan as if you were a corporation, a business, because you are a business. You earn money. And no corporation out there would leave their business exposed to these risks. You shouldn't either. You know, a pet peeve of mine is when people use probabilities. You know, uh, my family never had any problems, so I'm not going to have any problems. Or I don't think it's going to be an issue. Or it's only a 30% chance that something would happen like this. That might work in Vegas, okay, if you're rolling the dice or you're counting cards or whatever. But this is your life. And if your probability of something happened to you or not it can't be 60% because it's only you. It's not a, a thousand chances. It's only you. So it's either 100% it's going to happen or 0%. I either got cancer or I didn't get cancer. I either lost my job or I didn't. There's not a 60% I lost my job. Okay? And, and, and so I have seen in over 2,800 cases in my career, 16 years, 17 years this year, unbelievably, people live longer than they thought. People die younger than they thought. Losing jobs, getting raises, getting promoted, fight and beat cancer, have babies they didn't expect. Investment risk is enough. Okay, Real estate risk is enough. We don't need more risk on top of that. Why are we then throwing on top of that life risk? Okay, We need to take care of these things. And after doing planning, you should feel completely confident that you can lose your job, get sued, get in a car accident, suffer an injury, stay in the hospital because of those car accidents still get paid your paycheck, live your lifestyle, you could pick up a disease and still provide for your family, have your home burned to the ground, have an illness when you're elderly, and still your retirement's on track, your family's taken care of, your investments are growing properly. That's what you should feel. And I encourage you, if you have any doubts, please reach out, email me, daniel at financialwakeupshow.com, call the studio right now, 888-909-1050. Take your questions right over the air about anything I've mentioned so far. We are going to talk a lot about health insurance coming up. There's a lot of questions I know we have around that. Before I go to break, though, be aware or be, beware tip of the week is be aware that just like a car without brakes, if your financial situation is not protected from risk, you won't go very far or very fast. Investments and retirement programs need time to grow and marinate properly. Without proper protection, beware that you may need to liquidate investments prematurely. That will result in investment losses, penalties, unnecessary taxation. It could severely ruin all the years of work you've, you've put in to, to save and grow your money. It's very important to protect it as well. So the fix, again, reach out. You've got my email, the website, financialwakeupshow.com. Call us now, 888-909-1050. We'll take your questions over there, the air. I'm going to welcome my guests to the show next. Wake up and get informed. We're going to break. You're on the Financial Wake Up Show with Daniel Choi, KCA, 1050 AM and 106.5 FM.
Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company has been serving the greater Inland Empire for over 60 years. For all of your printing needs, from full-color printing to high-speed copying and everything in between, go to Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. Their staff is committed to your total satisfaction. Great service isn't just lip service at Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. It's the way they do business year after year. Having trouble finding drafting supplies? Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company still carries a complete selection. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company is rated high in customer satisfaction by Value Star, an independent rating company. For all of your personal or business printing, call Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company at 909-792-3478. That's 792-3478. Or visit them on New York Street in Redlands off the I-10 and the Crosstown Freeway. Plexus Slim, the pink drink. It works. Consider the following. 95% of all diets and weight loss programs fail. 8 out of 10 Americans over the age of 25 are overweight. And 174 million Americans are overweight. Finally, there is a healthy solution to help you lose weight. The synergistic effect of Plexus Slim and Plexus 96 taken together can help you lose more weight faster than you ever thought possible. Experience quick results and keep the weight off. People around the country are experiencing amazing results and you can too. Plus, right now, you can try it free for seven days. Just email your name, address, and phone number for a free sample to tryplexusfree at gmail.com. Tryplexusfree at gmail.com. Plexus Slim, the pink drink. It works. Okay, and uh, welcome back. Um, it's time for me to introduce my guest today. I have a, a great pleasure of introducing Greg Hack, who is the founder and the principal at IntelliBenefits, their website, IntelliBenefitsINS.com. Uh, what Greg did is he identified a niche where technology and customer service could coexist, and this resulted in better employee benefits. Uh, in terms of an experience for mid-market and growing companies. Um, one thing that he said in the past at IntelliBenefits, we are part healthcare reform geeks, part compliance nerds, and completely obsessed with consum consum customer service. In a sea of generalists, they provide employee benefits uh, at an expert level. Um, he provides customized solutions, is a complete expert in this area, so I have a ton of questions that I want to get to in just a second. Um, he is a graduate of the Haas School of Business at the number one public university in the world, the University of California, Berkeley, Go Bears. Uh, prior to founding IntelliBenefits, he was the CEO of Pacific Group, which is a full-service national employee benefits brokerage in Orange County. He has an RHU, which stands for Registered Health Underwriter, a GBDS, Group Benefits Disability Specialist, and is an NAHU certified PPACA. Uh, he's originally from Portland, Oregon, which is a beautiful part of our country, and his wife and two daughters live in Irvine. Uh, and at this point, I want to say, Greg, good morning, and welcome to the Financial Wake Up Show. How are you? Hey, good morning, Dan. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. I am excited to ask you some questions. Healthcare has been in the news really since the beginning of last year with uh, all the things that happened in the political races and now with the inauguration of our new president. Obviously with the new administration in place, what's on people's mind is what are the ramifications you're hearing around health care reform moving forward with uh, with the new president? Yeah, I mean, it, it's absolutely fascinating because you have to give President Trump credit in that he's saying exactly what he said he was going to do during the campaign. And he was very adamant about repeal and replace Obamacare. I think that politicians, especially the Republicans, are, are trying to walk away from the full repeal position because, as you can appreciate, that's going to cause a tremendous amount of uncertainty for nearly every American in addition to the market. You know, the health insurance carriers don't like the uncertainty. I think that you know, many parts of the law are very popular and will, will likely say, um, for example, 
there's no cost. Preventive care is very popular. And there's a great benefit that, you know, your kids, if they're not offered coverage to their employer or if they don't have a job, they can keep that coverage until age 26 on mom or dad's coverage to their employer. And, of course, the elimination of pre-existing conditions. I think these are things that pretty much, regardless of where you are politically, uh, are pretty popular, and we, we would hope they would stay. It, it does seem, though, that he seems to be pretty adamant about repealing the individual mandate. And you know what's so crazy, Dan? When you think about it, if you set aside health care, and you almost have to pinch yourself and say, a law was passed that if I don't purchase this product, I will be penalized a percentage of my income. I mean, it, it, isn't that just bizarre, Dan? It, it, if, if, when you put it that way, it is. It is. Because um... that's really what happened. Said, if, you know, could you imagine if said, if you do not purchase a $50,000 life insurance policy, we're going to fine you $100 a year. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's that absurd. Yeah. But I, I think the individual mandate, you know, you look at the actual, the cost of that. So you know, the individual mandate says individuals must have a minimum level of coverage that is quote-unquote acceptable, and acceptable is or sufficient is defined by the government. But if you don't have that coverage, you're penalized, you know, two and a half percent of your household income. Right. And, you know, or $695 per adult. So it's, it's the greater of the two. Two and a half percent of your W-2 wages or income or $695. And I don't see how Trump can get away not repealing that because that's, that's so much a part of his platform of repealing that that at the very minimum you think he's going to have to repeal the individual mandate. Right, right. Now, if uh, if there are changes, which we anticipate, you know, what type of transition do you think will happen from Obamacare to the new plan? Is it, uh, is it going to be smooth? Is it going to be challenging? Do you think people will go without coverage? I mean, what are you hearing? Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of terrifying to think about. I mean, the, you know, the, the prices are pretty much set for 2017. Like, so, for example, in California, you know, the rates are going up about 13% across the board with Cover California. But the transition, I, Dan, I, I don't have a good answer for you because, you know, um, anyone that can predict what President Trump's going to do, they're, they're far smarter than I am. <laughs> um, because, I, you know, I don't think anyone has a grasp on exactly what's going to happen really until it happens. But it, it's going to be it's going to be a bumpy transition. Um, you know, we're trying to kind of have it both ways. We want everyone to have care, which is a very noble goal. But, you know, to get there, we have a private, you know, the private industry of the insurance carriers has to be involved in the present structure. And we have to have an environment that is profitable for them or they're not going to want to play. Right. You know, the alternative is, is a more government centric health insurance model and you know people are very wary of further government intrusion but anything that Trump does you know he's a savvy businessman so I think he'd be sensitive to the fact that it, it has to be still a profitable venture to keep adequate competition to provide good options but it, it's going to be a bumpy ride for sure right now with um with what you specialize in, you work with small to sometimes large, large businesses and provide them simplified and comprehensive health coverage. What are some common mistakes or opportunities you've seen for our business owner listeners when it comes to their health programs in, in, in your experience? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think opportunity is a great way to say it. I, I've had a lot of employers who, you know, employers, I think, are, rightly so, very sensitive to the needs of their employees. But, you know, myself having perspective, you know, working with, you know, employers across multiple industries, across multiple states, when I talk to employers about, you know, is the grass greener elsewhere? Is your competition providing better benefits? And you have to have some employers who are offering 
just really excellent benefits. And from an employer perspective, Obamacare and just the volatility of health insurance in general has kind of been an opportunity to push back some of the costs onto the employees. And I know that sounds like a terrible thing to say, but, you know, what employees don't often see is that when I'm meeting with an employer, let's say 90 days before the renewal, and the rates are going up 16%, and we negotiate with, let's say it's Kaiser or, you know, United Healthcare, and if we can't get the rate increase to come down, but let's say we move the plan to Anthem, and the rates still go up 8%, when we present that to the employees, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. All the employees see is an 8% rate increase, more money coming out of their paycheck, um, and what they don't know is had we done nothing, it would have been a 16% rate increase. So sometimes we're patting ourselves on the back when the rates only go 8% because it could have been much worse. Um, so I think for employers, it is a tremendous opportunity to start to scale back some of the benefits they're offering because employers cannot keep up with the continuing cost of, of health insurance. Mm. Um, you know, employers, they never expect a decrease. They know it's going to be an increase. But employees have been kind of sheltered from the actual cost of the health insurance, and especially when employees pay, let's say, just 10 to 20 percent. You know, 10 to 20 percent for them, the rate increase is kind of minimal. But that 80 percent the employer is paying, you know, they're having decisions of we're not going to open up another location because of health insurance. We can't give raises because of health insurance, and or or we will be laying employees off if we don't push more of the health insurance burden onto the employees. That sounds so horrible. As far as it, well, and, 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 you know, but just the cost of the benefits in general has become such a greater line item, you know, than ever before. Yes. So I, I think employers, because cost of health insurance is so prevalent, it's so prevalent in the media, it's almost a good alibi for them to push more of the cost onto the employees because nobody can blame them. Everybody knows it's expensive. Um, and it's not just some nebulous number the employer's coming up with. Everybody knows that it's a very burdensome cost for employers. Right. You know, with our baby boomer generation, um, you know, well ingrained into our society now, many of them are retiring. Um, I get a lot of questions around Medicare, you know, and it's surprising how many people don't know what the benefits are and how to enroll and all that sort of stuff. Can you give our listeners a brief rundown on Medicare and what uh, what they need to be aware of there? And Medicare is a great program. I mean, I, I, every time I have clients there, let's say 63 or 64, all they can say is, man, one more year. <laughs> or, man, 18 more months, so I'm on the Medicare because it's really a great product. Um, so you know, Medicare can be really complicated, though. I'll try and break it down. There's really going to be four parts to it. You've got uh, parts A as in apple, B as in boy, and D as in baby. And so simply stated, uh, part A, so that's, you know, you pay your FICA taxes and you have your Medicare deduction for your paycheck. Okay. You're paying in the Medicare. And so when you turn 65, part A is going to cover your hospitalization costs. And that's no cost. because You've been paying into that for as long as you've been working. So there's no cost for Part A. So Part B, that's going to pick up the cost of, let's say, office visits, lab, x-ray, outpatient surgery. It's really everything other than hospital or prescription drugs that falls into the Part B bucket. And that's going to be maybe $115 to $120 a month. And that's indexed on income. So if, if you're making more, uh, you're going to pay more than that, but we'll say $120 on average for that. And then uh, Diaz and David, that's your prescription drug benefit. And, you know, you can purchase that for, those numbers are all over the map, but maybe $40 a month. So for maybe $150 a month, you got part A, B, and D. Now, some people are going to look at that coverage, and it might not be sufficient for them because, you still have costs. You know, Medicare doesn't pay 100% of your expenses. So another option is to get a supplement. So you know, anyone that is 64 and a half can tell you that they get just inundated 
with you know, pieces in uh, you know, pieces in the mail for programs from like you know Humana, Secure Horizons, Kaiser, and other carriers because you can purchase a Medicare supplement plan that helps to offset your out-of-pocket costs that remain after Medicare has paid their portion. And those can cost, you know, another $100, $200 as well. But unequivocally, if you're 65, the cost of coverage through Medicare versus the cost of an employer plan, it's going to be much less expensive with Medicare. You know, the only downside is, you know, you no longer get the employer contribution that you had when you were on the employer plan. Um, just the cost of the coverage, it, it's going to be much less expensive for Medicare. It's a great product. That's uh, what I've heard, and it's good to hear you break it down as, as deftly as you just did because uh, – it's really good stuff, and I appreciate it. Now, um, business owners, HR consultants, uh, HR directors at companies, they should all reach out uh, if they have any questions or want a second opinion on their benefits. Again, Greg Hack, who founded and runs IntelliBenefits, their website, IntelliBenefitsINS.com. Uh, Greg, how do they reach you? Do, do you prefer email, phone? How do they reach you? Yeah, email, phone, website. You know, email is Greg h five letters at intellibenefitsins.com or toll free the office 888-441-8481 and uh, again such good information today if you know anybody who runs a business or an HR department or you yourself have questions about uh, health insurance Medicare any of those sorts of things reach out to Greg reach out to us uh, at the financial wake-up show all his information will just like all of our partners be on the give more to get more page of the website Greg I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend uh, and uh, thank you for joining us hey, very good Dan I appreciate the opportunity absolutely Folks, we're going to go to the mailbag next. I got an email question, but before I do that, we got to take another break, and then we'll do our Give More to Get More segment to end the show. You are listening to the Financial Wake Up Show with Daniel Choi, KCA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. Now, here's a new concept, digital network advertising where businesses display your ad inside their building. If a picture is worth a thousand words, your company is going to thrive with digital network advertising. Choose your marketing sites or jump on the DNA system and advertise with all participants. Your business ad or logo is rotated multiple times an hour inside local businesses where people will discover your company. Digital network advertising. DNA novel way to be seen and remembered. Digital network advertising with networks in Redlands and Yucaipa. Call in the 909 area 222-9293 for introductory pricing. That's 909-222-9293 for digital network advertising. One last time, digital network advertising. 909-222-9293. How you doing? It's Jimmy here from Z. Today I wanted to tell you about my efforts to achieve global elimination of snoring. It all starts with respect. Respect for yourself and respect for others. Listen, you think you're being a nice guy or a nice girl by letting the guy or girl next to you sleep and snore every night. It's the ultimate disrespect to have that happen. You wake that person up and you tell them, go to zipa.com now. Z-Y-P-P-A-H. Dot com. We're not going to tolerate this, all right? Snoring is not okay. Someone next to you is snoring, you tell them to buy your Zipa. Z-Y-P-P-A-H dot com. I know that you're listening to these snoring things and you're thinking, well, it don't apply to me. I don't have these problems. A lot of people are in denial, but it's true. Listen, if you're snoring, you got to stop it. What you got to do is get this fixed. Get a Zipa and change your life. Z-Y-P-P-A-H Okay, and so let's uh, let's go to the mailbag here. I got an email question from Christian who asks, Daniel, I am worried about my income. If I were to get sick, 
Um, my work offers me AFLAC. Should I do the AFLAC program? Is that what you're referring to as disability insurance? Okay, AFLAC and disability insurance are different programs. So um, let me explain the main differences. Disability insurance or income protection insurance replaces your income or pays you your paycheck. In fact, to qualify, you've got to show your tax returns and prove that you make as much as you do. AFLAC pays you for certain triggering events or injuries or accidents. So it's it's two different models. Um, disability income, the benefits kick in when your physician says you can't work for whatever reason. As I mentioned before, they define def uh, disability as your inability to do your job. AFLAC pays you a certain amount for, let's say, spraining an ankle or visiting the hospital or doing this or doing that. That's not your paycheck. Uh, those check amounts that they pay you are determined by AFLAC's team as what they seem is reasonable for the risk of those types of issues. Um, they're totally different uh, programs. Be aware of that. Um, you know, everything we deal with, investments, insurances, uh, anything in, in America actually that's sold on in, in our markets is based on three key components. I call them the three amigos. Okay, there's costs, there's benefits, and there's restrictions. And in a free market uh, economy like ours, consumers, we get to pick two of those three. The supplier picks the third. So I'll give you an example. If I want something low cost with a lot of benefits, uh, I could tell you there's probably going to be some restrictions there because the supplier wouldn't make any money if they offered something really cheap with a great benefit and there were no restrictions. Okay, And vice versa, if I want something with no restrictions and amazing benefits, well then I've got to expect to pay a high cost for that. Or else again, suppliers wouldn't make any money in a free market economy. So keep in mind whether you choose AFLAC or other disability or any kind of investments or insurance that we talk about on the show, you've got to analyze the costs the benefits and the restrictions. I'll, I'll do an entire show on that, by the way, because it's a fascinating topic. Thank you, Christian, for the email question. Okay, so every week I end the show by highlighting a nonprofit. Why? Because although we talk about investments and growing money and doing well for yourselves and protecting it, I don't think you can truly get more in life without giving more. I really believe that. So this week's Give More to Get More segment, I'm going to welcome Randy Barth, who is the founder and CEO of Think Together. And he is the executive chairman of the Principles Exchange. Think Together is a nonprofit organization collaborating with communities, parents, and schools to help support uh, and create excellent and equity, equitable education for all kids. Uh, they provide early learning programs for uh, zero to five year olds, expanding learning programs for students K through 12. Um, they serve more than 100,000 students across 400 locations and 40 school districts statewide in California. Before embarking on a career as an education entrepreneur, Randy was a successful uh, person for more than 20 years as an investment advisor and later as a corporate CEO. Uh, he holds a BA in economics from UCLA. So we had a Cal grad earlier. We have UCLA now representing the University of California system well. Uh, he's also done some graduate work at the Drucker School of Management, the Claremont Graduate University. Um, and also has written a book, a bestseller, with a former LA Times reporter. The book is called Think Together, How You Can Play a Role in Improving Education in America. Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome Randy to the show. You're on the air with Financial Wake Up Show and Daniel Choi. How are you this morning? Great, Daniel. Uh, thanks for this opportunity and for having me on. Very excited uh, to be able to ask you questions about Think Together. So. Let's let's share. I, I gave some statistics of generally what you guys do, but what is the mission of Think Together? Well, uh, our our vision is that there will be equity and excellence in education for all kids. But as everyone knows, there's an increasing income inequality in our country, and much of that is rooted in our inequitable education system. So, our piece, what we do, our piece of that is is to create opportunities for all kids to discover their passion and reach their full potential. I think that's so important because as I look back on my education, I didn't follow my passions enough. I really didn't. And uh, I, I see that in some incongruencies with our education system. Can you give us a little of the history of Think Together and, and what you've done there? Yeah, so um, back in the mid-90s, there was a uh, gang shoot. There was a lot of gang issues that had blown up big across the country. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we had we started in Orange County, and there was a gang shooting in a neighborhood in Westside Costa Mesa called Shalimar, 
Mm-hmm. And it made the local newspaper, it was an interesting story, because the mothers in that neighborhood organized to take the neighborhood back from the gang. And so I read about it in the newspaper. Uh, I was a Newport Beach stockbroker, and a friend of mine was a Catholic priest. Uh, and I was involved in a, in a large, wealthy church. And uh, our church, I, I called the Catholic priest up, and I, I said, uh, is there something we could be doing as churches uh, to help these moms in the neighborhood? In the neighborhood? And he, uh, that parish, uh, that neighborhood happened to be in his parish, and so he knew that... Um, the ladies, and we went out with them, and what they said is we need a safe, quiet place for our kids to study after school in the neighborhood. The kids were bused uh, from school back to that neighborhood, and it was a bunch of high-density apartments with nothing uh, to do. And so we rented a three-bedroom apartment in the neighborhood. I think we'd have 30 kids and a handful of volunteer tutors from the church, and the first day we had 100 kids at our door. Wow. And we had no idea what we were doing, but uh, those uh, and out of the volunteers that we had, we had 12 women that were uh, empty nester housewives in the mid-50s who had been teachers when they were young, and they um, and they basically took that program and, and made it into a little school. Um, and from that one street, we've sent over 400 kids to college, all uh, first-generation immigrants. Uh, and we've had the first 150 or so have graduated, and we have a, a two-time an award-winning TV producer. We have architects, engineers, teachers, policemen, uh, and we have our first uh, student in medical school, third year at Loyola Chicago, and we have um, our first kid at Harvard last year, Jose Monte from that neighborhood. So it's one street. Uh, you know, we've seen that with the right support system, it can make a big difference in outcomes for kids. Man. So the rest of the thing together, uh, you know, is really about scaling those opportunities so, so uh, more kids can benefit. That's a huge difference. I mean, big difference seems like an understatement. From 100 kids that first day to over 100,000 now, 400 locations. Just an incredible story. I have a list of all these programs you offer. Can you give a summary of what areas uh, you'd like to highlight for our listeners as far as how they can get involved with Think Together? Yeah. The core of what we do is... uh just like we started at Shalimar, is we start, we, we do a daily comprehensive after-school program, which kind of extends the school day. Uh, and so we do an hour or so of uh, extended academics in either language arts or math in the day. Um, and then we do homework help, and then we do structured physical fitness. And then through the course of the week, we do STEM programs and art programs and other enrichments where we're really tapping into these kids' passions. And we do field trips and a lot of things. So we're really trying to build essentially a middle-class support system around low-income kids. And so there's two ways that, you know, folks can help, and it's, um, we do really um, engage our community on it. So the money that um, comes um, to school districts from the state, the, the grants that fund these programs, uh, it's based on a model of um, the programs cost about $10 per student per day, and the state funds $7.50. And so we raise... Um, private sector matching funds to fund that $2.50 gap. So if folks want to donate, you know, they can help sponsor a student uh, for however many days, uh, you know, times $2.50 a day, you know, in the field that they would want to do. And then we also, um, you know, we started as an all-volunteer operation, and we have, we mobilize a lot of volunteers, everything from seniors to um, folks with time on their hands in the community to lots of college students who think they might want to be teachers and so they get some experience in a classroom type setting. And so we use volunteers to help lower the um, student staff ratios, particularly during the homework uh, support hours because these kids, um, many of them's uh, parents speak Spanish so they can't help them with the homework at home. Uh, very much like we started with, there's still that gap, you know, broadly across the state. And so um, having volunteers come in and help uh, students for the homework at, at various levels. So it could be, uh, you know, young, new readers, you know, uh, older elementary, you know, learning their math facts, multiplication tables, things like that. And then as you move up into middle school and high school, some of the higher maths or the, you know, science things and, and stuff like that that uh, kids need help with. It's remarkable to hear some of the success stories of some of these students through your programs. Um, said for $2.50 to be able to to sponsor someone for a day, I think 
all of our yeah. listeners, listeners should take note of that. Do you have any events or fundraisers coming up in 2017 you'd like to promote uh, over our airwaves? Yes. Uh, on April 27th, we have our 20th anniversary celebration. So our original work at Shalimar started in 1994, and then we incorporated things together as a nonprofit in, in 1997. So on April 27th, uh, we're having uh, uh, a sizable fundraiser celebration of our 20 years uh, so far and casting our new uh, our vision for the next 20 years. And that'll be at UC Irvine uh, the evening of April 27th. We'd love to have everybody come out and uh, join in the celebration. Great. How do they find out more about you, the organization, and those events? What's your website? Yeah, our website is just thinktogether.org. Uh, and there's information both on the organization and on our 20th anniversary celebration. That's remarkable. 20 years of, of amazing work. Uh, last question before I let you go, uh, Randy. Sure. What's What's been the most rewarding aspect for your involvement in, in developing this concept till now? Well, I think there's really two things. I mentioned um, it's seeing these kids um, with the right support system achieve their full potential. So we've, since we've been around 20 years, we've now seen that kids that were uh, maybe young teenagers in our early days are now in their mid-30s mm -hmm. uh, and see them off, like I said, architects, any award winning TV producers, you know, kids in medical school now. So that's tremendously rewarding because they're really changing the destiny of their families. The other thing, we have a, um, we have one thing we didn't talk about in uh, maybe a different segment, but we have a school consulting firm. So we have this unique look into all these different um, schools and we see what's working and not working. Our highest performing and most improved schools had worked with a school consulting organization called the Principals Exchange, and they do professional development for teachers, administrators, uh, and some systems change work. And so we raised some money uh, and, and acquired a stake in them uh, last year so they could go and expand and help uh, more schools and school districts. And so um, the expansion of that, so really it, it thinks uh, kind of expanded learning programs. We help kids beat the odds. But what Principles Exchange does is work an entire system and change in the odds, and that's very powerful, too. So those are the things that uh, I've found most rewarding. Yes, and I have to say the numbers and the results are, are astounding. We're, uh, I, I am grateful to hear stories like this all the time because it just gets me real fired up about what's going on in our communities and so many good programs out there. Again, everyone, website is thinktogether.org. It's been my pleasure to have Randy on, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dana, for the opportunity. Absolutely. And here we are again at the end of another episode. Um, you know, folks, I always say, if you have any doubt, just reach out. Call me, talk to me, ask questions. Uh, the phone number to reach me is 8507-WAKE-UP. 8507-WAKE-UP. It's to wake you up, to find out information, to get you in engaged and involved. Uh, if I don't answer, uh, I'll return the call, I promise. Uh, the website, financialwakeupshow.com. Write me and ask questions. My direct email, daniel at financialwakeupshow.com. You can reach me there. Also, you can tweet or ask questions on the Facebook page. Uh, we will respond to those very quickly. Uh, everything we discuss is confidential. Uh, and, and again, we just want to see if you're doing everything you can to make the most of your hard-earned incomes. Uh, learned some great things today about health care, about reform, about protection, and uh, the wonderful work that Think Together has been doing. If you ever miss an episode, again, YouTube, search under the Financial Wake Up Show with Daniel Choi. Uh, you can also download the podcasts on iTunes or Google Play. Uh, the links go out on all of our social media. And uh, again, the handles are a at TFWUS. Until next Saturday. I wish you health, wealth, and prosperity. Uh, I've enjoyed speaking to you again this morning. You've been listening to the Financial Wake Up Show with Daniel Choi on KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. Have a great weekend.
Guardian, its subsidiaries, agents, and employees do not provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. Consult your tax, legal, or accounting professional regarding your individual situation. All investments contain risk and may lose value. Daniel Choi, Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor and Certified Exit Planner, is a registered representative, financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC. Securities products and advisory services offered through PAS, member FINRA, SIPC, financial representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York, PAS, is an indirect, wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. Westpac Wealth Partners is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian. California Insurance License Number OD40390. This radio broadcast is for informational purposes only. Guest speakers and their firms are not affiliated with or endorsed by PAS, Guardian, or Westpac. Opinions stated are their own and not 